So before I do anything today, um, before I go out and get a new battery for my car and go skiing, I'm going to put on some sunscreen because I never leave the house without sunscreen. I even wear sunscreen inside. Uh, today I'm going to put Lady Face, or yeah, Lady Face Earth Mama Mineral Sunscreen, um, SPF 40, which is actually pretty cool. I actually, for some reason, thought it was SPF 30 till I just looked at this box, even though it says, it says on here, S SPF 40. So I have two shades of these ones. I have the skin, well, my skin color one. And then I have this darker one that you wore <laughs> in Puerto Escondido. Um, and I use that for a contouring stick. Because I have rosacea, my rosacea, I know for sure, is set off by whatever the fuck this is. I actually haven't gotten it diagnosed, but I'm almost certain it's rosacea. Yeah, uh, I have rosacea, so at least I think I do. And I find that sunscreen really helps. Sun protection in general really helps. And sun exposure makes it heaps worse. Actually, that's how I realized I had this. Um, issue with my skin is because I went camping and didn't wear any sunscreen because I was covered in bug spray and I just didn't want the extra disgusting layers and I was sitting out in the sun drinking and ended up getting like the redness all over my face it was so red that I thought I had a sunburn but it just wouldn't go away like the whole summer and I mean I never get sunburned really anyway um it's really rare I realized that it was actually uh, a rash and not actual sunburn even if you don't have rosacea, it's a good idea to wear sunscreen because even if you're not trying to prevent a sunburn, there's two types of UV rays. There's UVA and UVB. Well, there actually is like three, but the third one is covered by the atmosphere that we have. So it's not really an issue. I think it's called UVC. I'm using the camera as a... Even if you wear like protective clothing like hats, um... The reflection off the sand, the snow, water, even trees, even pavement and houses and buildings, everything pretty much. Even if you're in shade, you're still going to get exposed to UVA rays. UVB rays is pretty easy to um, avoid because it's the difference between them is that UVA rays are really slow acting, and the, but they penetrate deep into the skin. So it's UVB rays, they are really fast acting, but they only burn the top layer of your skin and they, they cause a lot of damage in a short amount of time. So in the beginning, sunscreens were actually made for UVB rays just to prevent uh, sunburns. And then it's only, um, not recent years, I don't say, but recent in the span of, I guess, our sun damage research, they actually only made sunscreens to prevent from UVB damage. So that means that UVA wasn't protected from. That means that even if you were going out in the sun, in the sun and you never got sunburned, you were still getting um, damage to your skin, stuff that can cause. So my memory ran out, so I had to go and delete a bunch of old videos and memes <laughs> and uh, try again. So yeah, as I was saying, um, back in the day when sunscreens were made, made, mainly used for UVB damage and not UVA damage, um, people were still getting sun, sun damage and still getting aging, still getting risk of skin cancer because what happens with UVA damage is that it goes deeper into the layers of your skin and then it um, destroys the DNA and the collagen and the connective tissue inside of it. Um, and it degrades the integrity of the skin and it also increases the risk for mutations. So because of that, I mean, the risk of skin cancer was still there even if you weren't getting a sunburn. Um, same with if you wear a hat, same with if you wear, um, you know, like t-shirts and long sleeve shirts. If it's not, um, protecting against UV, UVA and UVB damage, if it's not, um, really tightly knit synthetic fabric, acrylic, polyester, I think. Um, but if you didn't have that on and you just had cotton t-shirts on, you're still getting UVA damage. You're still even, I think, getting UVB damage. I'm not really sure about that, but I'm pretty sure there's like, you're still going to get a sunburn because it's only like... A cotton t-shirt apparently only provides um, like five SPF, which is not even, not even anything. This SPF or this sunscreen is a broad spectrum. It covers UVA, UVB, and it also has a lot of, even outside of being um, a mineral sunscreen, I find it really helps with my rosacea because it has um, all these moisture sealing ingredients like shea butter and beeswax and stuff like that. And when I put it over this area of my face, I find it seals in the moisture and then my rosacea doesn't get so flared because 
part of the reason why your, your rosacea will get flared is because it's not getting enough moisture. The skin barrier, the little lipid fat barrier that covers your skin, that's supposed to cover your skin, gets disrupted. And because of that, anything, it's like your skin is raw, kind of. So anything can irritate the shit out of it. I actually have like a lot of intolerances. I can't have anything with fragrance. I can't have anything with chemical sunscreen. Alcohols, um, yeah, just like a lot of things. And because I live here in Labrador, it's like most of the time, it's like in the minus mid 20s to the minus mid 30s um and because of that i go outside and i'm gonna p put myself at risk of a flare because my skin is so sensitive and i find that this really mitigates that it doesn't prevent it altogether, especially in like my days when it's like minus 35 out but i find that it prevents it a nice bit like if i went out with nothing even if it wasn't sunny if it was night out I'd still get irritated because it's the fucking cold. It's the cold, dry weather. I'm using this as a mirror. It's not going well. Like, lean in really close and see if I got it all blended in. And I have no idea. One second, I'll be right back. I'm back with a mirror. <laughs> you can kind of see everything that's outside. Yeah. As I was saying, um, I have rosacea. I find that this stuff not only helps with the skin um, protection from the sun, but I also find that it helps the skin protection from the water loss. I think they call it transdermal water loss, which just means that the water in your skin evaporates out of the air. Um, and because this stuff kind of like acts as a really oily kind of seal, it kind of prevents a lot of that um, transdermal water loss. Even if you don't have rosacea, I think this is a really good sunscreen to use, especially if you live up here. I mean, it's SPF 40. That's pretty, that's pretty good. I brought it to Mexico and it was fucking awesome because I found that even if I was to go into the ocean water which used to strip my chemical sunscreen back in the day um it didn't strip it as quickly it, I'd have to be like in there for a little while and rubbing my face like the water out of my eyes or whatever for it to actually strip off the sunscreen so it was actually pretty good like I came back and my freckles were a little darker, but it wasn't like I had a tan on my face, um, which was pretty awesome. But even if you don't have rosacea, you should be wearing sunscreen because if you don't have a predisposition to um, a condition of skin before that, you're going to get one anyway, or you're just going to get a lot of wrinkles, or you're going to get skin cancer. Anyone can get skin cancer. Anyone of any like shade of skin can get skin cancer. In fact, with people with darker skin shades, especially like African um, descended people, they actually get skin cancer and they're high, high, they have higher rates of mortality because of it, because the suspicion isn't there like it is for light skinned people. This looks ridiculous. <laughs> I look like I could be a comic character. You know how they draw comic characters? I don't, I'm like a total skin care nerd. So, I actually like love just listening to people talk about sun sun damage facts or sunscreen facts. I just really like listening to sun um, sun stuff and skincare stuff in general. Um, and I hear a lot of it, and I don't see a lot of people talking about this particular sunscreen. It was actually really hard for me to get. I had to get it off Amazon, which I don't f always feel comfortable getting things that I put on my face on Amazon. And the reason for that is, I think I put too much brown stuff on. <laughs> it's uh, getting pretty dark over here. <laughs> but I don't always like to get stuff off Amazon that you put on your face because there's actually a huge black market. Um, well, I don't even know if it's a black market because it's on Amazon. But there's a huge market of counterfeit stuff and fake, um, fake made stuff, counterfeit. And they use uh, product names and their brands the face of the brand to try and sell you things that are actually fake and I guess Amazon doesn't really have a whole a good hold over that situation so things like makeup or skincare they they make it completely fake and then brand it as the stuff that is real um like skincare and makeup makeup I have a very big problem with well I have it with anything that you put on your face but makeup in particular for me because when I was in Thailand, I bought a makeup palette at a kiosk in a mall. And I thought that if it was in a mall, a well-known mall, I think it was, oh geez, what is, it's the major one in Bangkok. I can't remember now. It's, it was, 
Oh, if you say the name, you know what? I'll just put the name here because I'm going to be editing anyway. So it, it'll be right here. Um, so I went to that, that uh, mall and I went to this kiosk and this lady was selling really nice makeup palettes. Well, they look nice. <laughs> and, um, and I bought one a year later that I, I used it finally. Um, and I noticed after a while that well, for one thing, it wouldn't go on the way that an um, eyeshadow normally would. Um, I just found that the pigment looked really nice in the container, but then when you tried to put it on, it wasn't it wasn't spreading the way that normal eyeshadows do. And and then after a while, I noticed that I was getting these little red bumps right here. Um, and I didn't think too much of it because I wasn't putting my eyeshadow here. I was just putting it up here. So. I was just like, mm, maybe it's something else. I didn't suspect the eyeshadow at first. And then it started happening. So then I, because it was obviously something going on, I stopped wearing makeup because if you, like, if you don't know what's going on and you have some kind of infection, you don't want to contaminate the rest of your makeup by continuing to wear it. So I stopped wearing the makeup that I was wearing and I would just go bare face. And I started to notice that it was still getting worse. So then I started soaking it in hot, salty water because when you live in Labrador and you do your own healthcare, um, that's what you do when, for infections. You use hot, salty water and you don't go to a doctor. And eventually it, eventually, like it was like three months, I think, of me soaking my eye in water, um, hot, so salty water. And then I noticed it went away, but it did, uh, before it went away completely on this side, it did go a little bit on this, this side. Eventually, in the span of the three months that it took to get my skin back to normal on, in these areas, um, I realized that it was probably the makeup palette that I bought in Thailand. And so I threw it out and then I threw out everything, even my makeup brushes that I had at the time, I threw those out because I didn't want anything that had whatever had touched that stuff to contaminate my face further. So that sucked. <laughs> and I think I just didn't wear makeup for a little while. Um, because I was like worried that the infection would get aggravated. Um, which it hasn't come back at all. So that's nice. So yeah, I don't buy that. That's the reason why I don't buy um, a lot of things that you put on your face or on your body in um, Amazon. Because I had heard that the same type of shit that happened to me from getting that stuff in the kiosk in Bangkok uh, happened to other people wearing makeup stuff in um, from Amazon. So like one lady, I think she wore, what was it? Was it fake eyelashes or was it mascara? It was one of those things. And she ended up having like a very severe infection in her eye, um, people having staph infections and whatever, because this stuff is made not in labs, but just like in warehouses or not warehouses, but just like regular houses by people who are just leaving stuff out. Rats are sitting on the stuff and shitting on it. And it's, it's, it's just a, a bad situation. Um, so why do that? Why risk spending your money on stuff? Um, because you want to have better skin and then getting even worse outcomes than before, because you just, weren't picky about where you got your stuff from I would rather that so because a lot of the things that you see online you can't get um in Canada and I guess in other countries that you see online from um, American people pro uh, promoting it I just if I can't find it on um skin stores that supply that kind of stuff to Canada I very rarely rarely ever get it from uh, Amazon I think I put a lot a lot on a little bit too much oh well I'm going skiing so I don't really care <clears throat> and I mean the fun fact about about being in a pandemic is that even if you fuck this stuff up it's gonna be very unnoticeable because you're wearing like most of your face is covered so I noticed that when people put a lot of sunscreen on in videos a lot of the time they miss their like eyelids like the top of their eyelids they even like don't even hit here they'll hit like around here and it's like this is the spot that you want protected from the sun, like not the most, but you also want it protected from the sun because this is like the thinnest skin that you have. And this ages like really quickly. And there isn't like a whole lot of like bone 
or anything like that underneath it. It's just a socket. So if your skin loses its fullness or whatever, it just looks really sunken in. It's not really well done. It's like smeared. Yeah. But at least I'm protected from the sun. So I've done like everything pretty much except my neck and the middle of my eyelid, like right here. And what I do is I use this different brand. It's Color Science, which is like, I, I hear they're very reputable. In fact, I think they actually make their stuff for rosacea. Oh, now you can read it. Yeah, so it's SPF 50, uh, broad spectrum, and it's also a mineral sunscreen, and it's pink. It's used like as blush or lip stuff. I also use it on my eyelids because I find that it has a really metallic uh, look to it, and it's SPF 50, so I'm doing a really shitty job using my phone as a mirror. I don't even leave it at that. I then go in again. And I just put this light colored stuff over top of it because I find it goes really well together. Like I find it looks like a really nice um, eyeshadow. And then sometimes I use this as like a blush, which is actually what it's meant to be used as. I think I'm going to need my mirror for this. The reason why I have uh, this part of my mirror blanked out with um, nail polish is because uh, one time I almost caught my house on fire um, because I had it... This part, the part that isn't magnified, I had it facing towards me. Um, and then the other part I had um, out the window because I do my makeup, obviously, as you can see in the window. And I was doing it in the south facing part of the window. So the sun was shine shining directly at it. And because of that, when I was looking away, I, um, <laughs> I smelled some burning. And I was like looking around my room wondering where this burning smelled because it was very strong. And then I noticed that the magnified part of the mirror was facing um, the trim of the window, the part that, of the window that connects to the um, sill. And it was burning. Like it had a, uh, it was like smoking, like it was about to catch fire. And so I quickly like took it away and then I covered it in uh, nail polish. It wasn't this mirror. It was like years ago. Um, but obviously when you learn that it could happen to one with one mirror with a magnified side, you do it to all your mirrors. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't even know who uses the magnified side and I don't, I don't know why you would use it because you could just, you know, look closely. I don't know. It's, it, it's, it's, it's the risk that it comes with. Why would you continue to make mirrors like that if they're going to burn people's houses down? Okay. I am a sunscreen fiend, but this is a fuckload of sunscreen. Like it's just a cake. I don't know if you could see that, but it is a lot of sunscreen. In the daytime, instead of wearing my lady face stuff, if I'm just like going to work or whatever, I wear this, which is Cer CeraVe, um, the mineral sunscreen, but it's tinted. Um, I don't like it. I bought it because I thought I would like it and it, I didn't look at enough people with videos with it. I mean, it's good stuff, good ingredients. It doesn't like bother my skin at all. It's just super orange. Um, and it makes me look like I had a horrible, like I did a, a at home fake tan with no instructions. Like you can see it's a little bit orange now, right? I mean, it's much more orange. Maybe if I lower the, ah, there it is. So when it's on my face and even today I'm gonna do this, I wait until it like dries a little bit and then I put this stuff on it, which it's a really good sunscreen, but it's very, very white. It's a very white cast. I, I don't like to use it by itself. I look like a mime. So I'm just gonna smear that shit on there. Oh, fuck. Yeah, now I'm super protected from the sun. The only complaint that I have about this sunscreen is, well, actually all mineral sunscreens, cause they all do it to some degree, is you've probably noticed this like in person and in the video is that it just creases in all of my areas but honestly like I don't care to <laughs> personally it doesn't bother me I mean it's obvious that I'm wearing shit on my face so it's gonna crease somewhere so yeah I mean that's that's like the biggest con about this yeah unless you really don't like it wiping on stuff like you um it's just the cakiness and the getting increases so that's the only thing I like about the sunscreen that I wear the SPF 40 is that even though it rubs off on everything and it gets on your mask I find it stays on your mask better than other sunscreens 
especially um, chemical sunscreens. I find that even though there's like a whole bunch and maybe even a line on your nose from the mask, that there's still enough there that it covers, you just smudge it and it covers. And you can add more and it doesn't look weird. So I'm actually not at Birchbrook. I'm at um, a skidoo trail that leads onto the military base in uh, the still in town, whereas Birchbrook is in the area that you see with the mountains. M mountains, I guess they're, they're giant hills, mountains. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's way over there. You drive there. It's about, I don't know, 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes from here. This is it. The sun actually came out a little bit. So maybe tomorrow it'll be warm and sunny. Or maybe one of those, just one. I would rather it be warm than sunny. This is the end of the line. I can go in there, it's just that I don't really feel like going that far today. It's pretty cold out, actually, with the wind. So, so this is the very last um, part of the video, my very first video of the sandwich buns on our YouTube channel. Um, I'm going to upload another video of a compilation of skiing videos that I took in the previous weeks. Um, and you'll see that now in a few days. It won't be 20 minutes well, long, I promise. Trail back to where Have a good day. My vehicle is.